I'm a structural engineer. I have a private practice and uh, I help people with anything that needs to be built that shouldn't fall over. I will make sure that it doesn't fall over. Um, if it's already been built and I can help them bring it up to spec so it doesn't fall over uh, or just let them know that it's fine and move on from there. It's an underrated uh, program in, in a lot of circles because a lot of people um, has a reputation for being a very difficult program to use um, and it can be. Uh, however, it's also the most powerful, uh, the most versatile and it simply does things that most other programs e either can't do or are so cumbersome to try to do those things with. In, um, I think it's kind of like the gold standard of analysis software uh, in structural and mechanical engineering. And I think that the, you know, once you learn how to use it, you know, your options are, are pretty much limitless. And I really value that as an engineer. The user has absolute control over every single aspect of his model. Um, most other finite element programs or structural analysis programs do not allow you the versatility to define every single aspect of your structure. Um, without getting into too much technicality, what that means is that I can determine exactly what my boundary conditions are. If I have unique boundary conditions, I can model them. If I can figure out a way to mathematically relate the behavior of a structure to uh, some sort of component that's exist in Strudel, I, I can model that. I can make that happen. Um, and uh, I think that Strudel offers this kind of control. With that comes a, a lot of responsibility to make sure you're doing it right. And with that also comes a requirement to have a lot of a deep knowledge of physics and the program itself and programming language and you have to understand all how these things work. If you have all of that, you have in your hands the most powerful tool in the world. Um, without that, it can be dangerous. <laughs> Tensile fabric structures are not like normal structures. Um, normal structures, like the one we're sitting in right now, uh, has roof and walls and these things are anchored to concrete and the concrete's anchored to the earth. And if everything goes right, nothing moves, or at least not very much. Um, and that's the way it should be. Tensile fabric structures aren't really nearly so nice. You can reach up with your hand and pull on them and they move. And the wind blows on them and they can billow up and they can sag down. Um, and this is not the way structural engineers like to work. We don't like things to move. We want everything to stay put. So tensile fabric structures don't do that. So it presents a bit of a challenge. Um, our codes don't really govern um, how to analyze tensile fabric structures. Um, the other thing is that uh, they maintain their stiffness. They maintain their stiffness um, entirely by the tension in them. So if you think about a, a jump rope, you have two people pulling it on either end, it's gonna get mostly flat. As they come together, it droops down. So in order for these things to stay up, you gotta have pulling on all directions. And then once they're pulling on all directions, you can apply a little itty bitty load in the center and you get big giant lateral loads on the outside. And this is a very uh, difficult engineering task to overcome. And so there are numerous challenges with it and a lot of people just don't like to touch them. Either that or they analyze them like they would regular structures, and this has its own host of problems. So uh, it's a unique challenge, uh, but it's something, engineering, it's something engineers do need to be able to address.